So Mike, tell us a little bit about your life before you accepted Islam. My life before Islam was a, a bit of a, a challenging and very, both rewarding and interesting one. I was very misguided in my youth and I made a lot of silly mistakes and I was in a place in my life that I knew I wasn't happy and that I wasn't finding fulfillment. I described to people my life before Islam was like having an itch on my back in a spot that I couldn't scratch and I didn't know how to scratch it or what would scratch it for me. And once I found myself embracing Islam, I, I discovered that that itch was going and it was a, a sense of contentment that I hadn't felt before and I had a lot of issues um, growing up that led me to being essentially agoraphobic at stages of my life. I've suffered from anxiety and depression and all sorts. I self-medicated with smoking and drinking and nothing, none of those hedonistic pursuits, all those distractions were large enough distractions to resolve the emotional issues that I was having. Um, and Islam provided me with a framework to be able to begin to manage those. So my life before Islam was remarkably different to when it is now. Before you accepted Islam, did you really feel that there was much of a purpose in life? I think I found Islam really easy to come to because my Having a lot of hardships in my earlier life, it was, I always knew that I wanted to get to the point when I died, I wanted to look back on my life, honestly knowing that I gave it the best, that I was the best person that I could have been. And I didn't want to leave people hurt and I didn't want to leave myself with regrets. And I always knew that there was that, that purpose behind it, but I didn't really understand why until I really started looking into Islam. And it provided me also with, a, with the why, but the how as well, to be able to give me the, the tools and strength that I needed to be able to start being the person that I always knew that I could be, that I wasn't in my old life. I stumbled across Islam um, by running into a, an old school friend of mine who we'd known each other 15 years ago and we kind of lost contact. But um, this friend used to run the Introduction to Islam course at the Islamic Information Centre of South Australia. And so at that time I'd already begun reading the Quran. I'd actually started reading it for the second time because I was trying to get my head around it. Um, I'm very aware of global politics and so I was wanting to get my head around what is this what is this faith and so I have plenty of questions for Ahmed and after meeting a couple of the, his friends and the other Muslims in the community I started to realize that these guys are really where I want to be in life and that there has to be something to it um, all the questions that I was asking had really rational answers that made a lot of sense. So that was how I, I stumbled across Islam. How do you think you've changed since you accepted Islam? Accepting Islam has changed my life in so many positive ways. My demeanor is far better. My health is far, far better. Um, my outlook, my positivity, my creativity has all been improved by finding a way forward in my life that is structured in a positive manner. And the framework that Islam has provided me to be a better person has made my home life better. My partner is immensely happy with me now. My anxieties have dropped away. I haven't had a panic attack since I've embraced Islam. Um, 
my health in general is a lot better. I used to be one of these nervous guys that I'd be out in a, with a group of friends and I'd be sitting there and I'd be jittering and shaking and I'd need something to do with my hands and so I'd be chain smoking or none of that now. I've got a sense of calm about me that has, it, and it's, it's changed who I feel I am. I now feel like I'm the person that I was hot, hidden behind that shell of anxiety. And so it's really helped to free me into being able to be the person that I want to be. So before you accepted Islam, by what means did you try and experience happiness? Trying to fill the gap of happiness before Islam was really just pursuing hedonistic pursuits and distractions. Um, I would spend a lot of my time just on Facebook concerning myself with things that aren't really relevant to, to my life or my happiness, um, drinking with friends, all of those types of, um, yeah, just distractions that were just there passing the time that weren't really benefiting me in any shape forwards. I had many hangovers, many headaches, um, and all of the problems that were associated with running from dealing with my issues in life. And so my, the happiness um, that I was experiencing was all very temporary happiness, happiness through food, happiness through alcohol, happiness through distracting myself, movies, all of those types of things. I think trying to achieve true inner peace and happiness is a lifelong pursuit. I think what Islam has given me is is an understanding that that's okay and that doing the best that I can do and always moving forwards is, provides enough happiness for me to, and enough lasting happiness to, for, and hope that by the time I, I'm chosen to leave this world that I, I can experience that, that lasting and eternal happiness. What feeling do you experience when you make Salah? The very first time I made Salah was during Ramadan. I just said my Shahada at Al Khalil Mosque. Um, Ahmed Basil witnessed that with me and it was during the Tarawi prayer and I had no clue about what I was doing, what I was, what all of it was about. I went through the motions, but the emotion that I felt at the time was just fantastic, knowing that everybody was there, all submitted, all to the same path, was such a powerful feeling for me. And I felt a sense of community that I hadn't been able to get from anywhere else. Now, prayer and salah for me is liberating. It is my management tool for my anxieties. And by breaking my day down into, into distinct sections and being able to reflect on what have I done, what could have I done, done better, and what am I gonna do for the next section of my day has provided me with, a, with the ability to manage my emotions, manage my happiness, and the humility that I feel in Salat makes me, puts it all into context as well, that there is far bigger and greater out there than me. And having that humbling feeling multiple times a day is, is really liberating. It, it helps to liberate me from my anxieties. Tell us about how you took your Shahada, your declaration of faith, when you actually accepted Islam. Yeah, um, I was invited along to a, an iftar celebration. It was just, um, Ahmed Basil said, you know, we're having a dinner, we're getting a group of people, you should come along. Said, okay, yep, I'll, I'll come along. Um, and during that dinner, we had some really good conversations and I met a very inspirational brother, Brother Hani, who was also very involved with the Islamic Information Centre of South Australia. And he, 
he was very square down the line with me and he essentially is like, well, what do you, you know this, you, all of the, the questions that you're asking me, you already know the answers. So what are you waiting for? And I was reluctant to then, and I was still kind of a little bit kind of bowled over by the conversation, but I mean, say, well, come to the mosque, come to the mosque, we'll, we'll go and you can just watch the prayer. And, and so by the time we'd driven there and I'd let the conversations of the evenings sink in and I'd process those and kind of reflected back on everything that I'd learned, all the questions that I'd asked. And by the time we got to the masjid, it was really, I felt ready. And so it was in the continuation of that, that kind of processing that up and say, well, you know, are you ready? We can do this now. I was like, well, and it felt right, you know, the, it was at the masjid, it was with the community and it was a really beautiful experience. After the prayer had wrapped up between, so it was um, kind of just after Isha and up and announced it to the community and every, the celebration was quite amazing. It was really lovely. Just to be embraced so firmly by the community was really something special. As days go by, do you feel that your love for Islam begins to grow more and more? Yeah, my, my love and appreciation and humility it grows every day because it is something that the more you understand, the more the more you realise how how deep the faith is and how much it it does resonate with your soul. And from someone who came from a very atheist background that questioned the very existence of a soul, to now have something within me that a sense of quiet and around something that I rejected for so many years, it, it strengthens my faith every time I look back at it. And even on those days where you feel like your faith is weakening a bit, it doesn't, Allah doesn't let that go on for too long. There, there's always a reminder and then, and every time you, the, you hit with one of those reminders, your faith is strengthened and you, you, you learn from it and it makes those those times less frequent and it's it is it's a it's an amazing journey that gets deeper the further you go you realize how how much further you can go with it The most intriguing thing about Islam and the thing that really caught my attention was the history and the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it was learning about the, the life, the times, the social changes that he managed to affect with such limited resources around him was something that really spurred on a lot of interest for me. And I wanted to, I, I thought I could get my head around Islam by reading the Quran, which was very naive of me to think that I could do that without understanding the context of the Quran. So it was after, after failing in reading the Quran once and coming away with a, with a few parables that I could make sense of, and that's about it. Um, as soon as I started looking into the history, that was the real catch point for me that I realized, wow, there's the, the history behind it, the context of the Quran, why the message was sent when it was and how it was is miraculous. Um, and I guess it was the, I guess the, the subsequent, um, 
cultural shockwaves that it sent through history that really I find fascinating how how long and far the reach has been and why why it hasn't faded was essentially what tipped me over the line with my belief. What advice would you have to those that are looking into Islam? The advice that I'd give to people looking into Islam for the first time is to don't just read about it and watch YouTube videos. Go and find somebody in the community that you can talk to about this. There are a lot of friendly people in the community that are more than happy to offer up their experience as a Muslim living in Australia. And it's really important to, to get to know it from, from others that are practicing it, because without actually understanding how the life of a Muslim is lived, you're not going to be able to understand Islam. And there's a lot of information out there that is very skewed, very biased. The, the, it, it's better to find out from somebody in your community.